Um, hello and welcome to uh, the Decisions Daily Lunch and Learn. Today is Tuesday, March 8th, um, and I am your host today. Uh, my name is Noah Young. I'm on the professional services team. I've been at Decisions for coming up on three years now. Um, and let me see, we had a pre submitted question. I'm trying to remember who submitted it to see if they're on. Um, looks like they are. Um, yeah, no. So let's see. Hello. So yeah, Manal, if you want to um, come off mute and we can talk about your question. Hi. Um, is it okay if I ask right now? Are we good? Yeah. Because um, I see you had this pre-submitted, so I want to just jump into this one first. Sure. Because um, I see you said, how do I map a file reference in the data structure and process folder? And you chose file reference in the data structure. We can try to map to the process folder X for the file reference. Um, so can you um, explain how that's set up for me? Uh, can, you, can you hear me, Manal? I wanted to copy the text in the field, which is disabled. Um, OK, uh, Narsing, can you uh, please wait while I'm working on this uh, other problem with Manal? She had to pre-submit this question. Um, and then I'll be able to get to your question. OK. All right, thank you. Um, so, Manal, coming back to you, um, can, can you explain how you have this set up a little bit more? Uh, are, are you having mic issues? Because, yeah, we're not hearing you at all. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay, I am so sorry. I don't know. This like there's two microphones up there. Oh so, yeah. Um, so like on the on my form, I have a, a little <laughs> document option, and rather than choosing a file data, I chose a uh, file. In um like choosing all the size limits and everything, the only mm -hmm. problem I'm having is like whenever I'm trying to send it by the email um template. So for example, like for my process folder, I put it in my merge velocity step and I try to merge the reference and whenever the email gets sent it just shows like a decisions framework it doesn't show any documents that attach ah okay um so so what you're doing there with the merge velocity is you are creating a string um and so that's that's not how you would want to be trying to get that file reference on an email um because it, it's not something that can really be turned into a string. So if you try and add that to a text merge, that's it will just show up as that. Um, the same thing even happens with a string list. If you try and add a string list to a text merge, it'll just tell you it's a string list. It won't actually do anything with that string list. Um, so, so you're trying to attach the file to an email. Yes. So whenever okay. the user gets the confirmation, they can see whatever the files they attach, they can see. Yeah, I feel like the email step has something for that, but I have not set up an email step in quite some time. But let's see. Uh, okay, so there is a way to add attachments to the email step with the uh, list of attachments, but that's expecting file data. Um, so let me go ahead and get a create data step in here. Oh. 
reference. There we go. All right. All righty. Do and connect that. And let's see. Arabic test. Cool. All right. So you have the file reference. It'll have the uh, file data component on it. Um, so if you have like a list of file references, if you did select from flow, let me change this to a list real quick. So if they've uploaded multiple files and you have a list of file references, then you can do um, select from flow on the attachments here. You can come to your file reference list and then it'll have this file data list and that will attach the files to the emails. Awesome. Um, and Thank then if you, you so if you only have the one file that's being attached, you would just do build array and then do select from flow on the one item in the array. Because um, the attachments field here on the email step is expecting a list of file data, but if you only have one, you can do, like I said, do build array and then select from flow to select your one file. Okay, gotcha. And then, for example, like if it's a list, then you just choose all the file references. And all yeah, items. exactly. If if you have if you have like a multi-file upload component that they can upload two, three files at once, um, then you're able to just on the attachments list say select from flow test, and then you have the file data list there. So thank you. You're welcome. All right, and yeah, Narsing, we can jump onto your stuff now. Yeah, I have two se two set of questions. Mm -hmm. The first is, uh... hello. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Can you not hear me? Yeah. Okay. So we have a requirement. We have made a button disabled. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not button, the text box, the content in the text box, when it is in okay. disabled state, we are not able to select or copy that to use it somewhere. Is it a restriction in the decisions text box uh, control? If it is disabled, you cannot copy the data inside it? Um, I don't know if that is an intentional um, thing or not. And it could even just come down to because in the your way flow, it works in the background. Um, yeah, like you, the way you show the uh, flow, mm -hmm. like quickly you can uh, create a form and make yeah. that button and then make that field disabled and try to yeah, run yeah. it if you are able to co copy the data of it. If by default it is not copying, copyable, then what can we do to make it uh, that user can copy it to use it somewhere? Because there is a requirement business rule we have to write for a particular set of user, mm -hmm. the text box uh, data should be disabled, which is filled by the PM or the manager. So the resource cannot update, edit that field. It should be only view only seen to the other person. That is the All requirement. Right, so I've got first. data in the text box <clears throat> there. Show form, pick existing, recent, one, two. There we go. Okay, yeah, so I think that is just, just the way that this actually like works in the background is going to prevent us from doing that. So, so during the design of the form, is there any set? We try to find out, but we didn't. Do you know if you can copy text the, from a label? On the right side of the panel with the properties. Because I've not tried that before. <clears throat> no, you cannot select or copy a label either. Okay, because that would have <clears throat> possibly been an option, but no. If any of the property on the right side, either in the view or behavior, we can set to allow the user to copy on the fly, though it is disabled. 
We do not. Idea. Initially visible. What you what you did to make it disabled? Oh, um, that's just an option on the uh, behavior. I unchecked initially enabled. Um, so you can have this like by default, it's uh, set to constant value and it's set to true to have it enabled. Um, but then you can also do um, from okay. flow data, which would allow you to pass a very pass a boolean okay. into the okay, flow to it. say whether or not it's enabled. And then of course there's data flows you can run or not a data flows a uh, visibility right. rules and flows right. that so, you can run at the startup that would dynamically yeah. change that based on certain criteria. Yeah, that's what we did. But now yeah. the users need to copy the data uh, for the different user, though the feed yes. is disabled. So isn't yes. that possible? We can say, or can you give a look ahead, back and come back again? Um, I am not sure how we could get it to um, allow us to select and copy from that disabled text box by like a traditional method of um, like selecting it because we can't select it. Nope, I did profiler. I don't want profiler. I want global debugger doing crazy stuff. Let's see, because if I go here and I do manage and I say get flow ID, that's not a flow. How does it make this form show up? Copy text. Because yeah, see, we've got this copy text option here. <laughs> I was hoping that the global debugger would show me what's displaying this form and we could do what it's doing for this copy text option. But the global debugger is not showing me what makes that form happen. So how uh, we can get this if, copy if, text. If, 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 you can, this if you can open a developer mode, if you can press F12 and click on the copy text on the behind what is there, if you can see that. Copy text, what is on click, copy text to clipboard, where it is. Class. Uh, where is that method copy text to clipboard? Somewhere above below. Can you control and click? We'll go there. Just copy and find it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> remove this bracket, this. Yeah. Uh, no, remove this also, yeah, no. We've got it in two places. So, two places, a call, or an implementation also here. It's a big method, but there should be some way in decisions to make users to copy the text, select the text in the disabled field. Okay, that still does not want to help me. All right, so for this one, you'll probably have to uh, open a support ticket. Okay. Um, cause this is going to be a, uh, longer deep dive. Um, and it might involve setting up a, uh, JavaScript somebody, component somebody ping. that I'm not familiar with. Um, let's see. Jeremy has a question. No. There's a copy text solution. Button. Oh, okay, cool. There's a copy text button in the form designer. I have never seen that before. Let me try to find open that. this form. Form designer, there is a copy text button. That oh, yeah, designate. there's a copy text button. Very handy. Thank you, Jeremy. Yeah, I've never seen this component before, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Source control, because that's a number box. That's not what we want. Um, but if I go into form two where we have that text box. And then copy text link might be what they used on that other thing, or it's a button with some styling on it to make it look different, but boom. 
So you have to for this copy text button. Mm-hmm. This is a, I've never seen this before myself either. But it, so you have to marry it to an individual component. So if you want to copy from multiple, um, I guess, un um, uneditable fields, you would have to have a separate button for each. That's what it looks it like. It seems that way, yeah. Because yeah, if I go back into this, um, the copy text button source control, there's only you can only yeah. select one. Um, so yeah, it seems like you do just marry it to an individual text box. So then if you have two text boxes that you want them to copy, you'd have to have two copy buttons, one for each text box. But I mean, that makes sense, honestly, from a design standpoint. Yeah. Because there's yeah, just one copy to, button, please, you don't know what you're copying. Yep. Yeah, please try to add one more text box and see copy. if we can map both to this button. All right, there we go. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Is it works. one-to-one mapping? But thanks for that. But yeah, uh, it's one, one to one, would... so you'd have to add a copy button for each of these fields. Um, so or or another... there is a one to many relationship, like one copy text button, and we can give list of other buttons, other text boxes. Have two text boxes and one button right now, please. And try to, if we can give two text boxes we, to one. We, we can't give button. it two text boxes. Okay. The source control is only letting me select one item. Okay. Okay, at least we can have this. If user want it, we need to have one more. Every text box will have one more button. We can make mm-hmm. it small, smaller one just to click. Just so if, if, if they were to <laughs> click the one button, you would want them to get all of the text boxes as one single string? Yeah, if we can give the list of the text um, boxes, which user so can copy. Let's, let me see if this uh, multi-line text box shows up as an option it does so what you could do is um rather than having separate text boxes for your items um no. have that it separated as that... new line so that it no. populates this box separate new line and then you can copy from this box so that you get all of that data from that one button no no but that is not uh the requirement we have multiple like 10 text boxes of different like city state name address mm-hmm. surname so all those things the user want to copy so i if, if it is okay to have one button which can and we can register those text boxes to that button to copy to allow them them to copy if that is possible then it's very useful um that's that's not possible to it's only letting us select one item from source control. So that means Click that on the drop. we'd have to marry one button to one text box, which is where my suggestion came in that if rather than having it as a number of separate text boxes, join the contents of these text boxes into one string that then goes into this multi-line text box because the copy button will let you copy from the multi-line text box. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay, and right now at least I came to know that we can use this copy text button mm-hmm. and allow one of the, okay then, we'll uh, check with our team. Thank you for this. For the yep. next question is, uh, we want to integrate Outlook component with an email component. In your previous form here, you send email. So we want a DL, distribution list to be taken from the Outlook because to send a mail to multiple people, our business don't want to add each email ID comma separated in the two or CC. We Mm -hmm. want a DL name to be used and that should be from the Outlook. So we want to configure this control is send email with an Outlook Mm -hmm. so that it will fetch the DL. Yeah. Brian, do you know anything about integrating with Outlook? No, not too much. I think that that was something that was maybe touched on on yesterday's Lunch and Learn. I'm not 100% positive because okay. I had to leave early. Because if there's a way to get a list of emails as a string from Outlook, um, this too is set up as a list of string. So if there's a way to get that from Outlook, then you'd be able to. It means to... If, if, you are, if you are aware of the distribution 
list it should be for in outlook if we prepare a distribution list and give a list of email ids inside that so our requirement wants that distribution list to be given in this two and it will send mail to all those registered in mm -hmm. that distribution list from outlook so our question is to how to integrate outlook with this control um i'm unsure i've i've not had to integrate with outlook before okay i will uh, send a mail to support at the decisions.com for that okay, um, let me check our documentation see if it has any information about outlook that we can try and do something graph with something call. is there in the graph and noah just to clarify yesterday's lunch and learn they were mm -hmm. talking about exchange ah, okay Um, Outlook Exchange. Okay. But um, yeah, if I search Outlook on the documentation website, I'm not finding anything. Um, so yeah, I would open a support ticket for that and they'd be able to yeah, please. find someone on their team that would be able to uh, help you because if they, if they actually know about how to integrate with Outlook, because that is not something that I know, unfortunately. Yeah, please, then you can add my email ID also in that. Okay. What we have done, we have created a data structure, a table, and we have kept the DL name and the email ID list and tried to get it from that uh, table, the list of email IDs against the DL name, and then we're using, but that is not a good design mm -hmm. as per our reviewer. <laughs> Also, the from ID, uh, there is a set of uh, from ID for from which we are able to send mail, but not uh, working for another uh, component in the form from. So is there a way to register from which ID to mail to be sent to the domain of, let's say, or client domain? So is there a way to register the from ID that this particular ID only mm -hmm. can send mail to company's domain emails and particular mail id cannot send so we want to register a particular mail id say mm -hmm. uh, say smart form at the rate decisions.com this id we want to register which can send mail to the our client's domain say xyz.com yeah. um so that would most likely depend on the um smtp server that you're actually connecting to to send the email Okay, so will it be a part of the systems folder here and the admin can only register that send from ID? Because if you go to systems folder, so if you can show that where to register a particular from ID can send mail to particular domain. Um, I mean, that sounds like that would be an SMTP setting on the actual um, mail server that you're using. Yeah, that's what I want to know the path of it. So we can request our admin to give some permission to add some prom IDs, which can send mail to a particular set of companies domain. Okay, so if, so if you could guide me here where to go and register a particular ID in the from tag text box. I mean, the from text box is just a regular um string yeah, but, so like but, you can but right enter now, whatever but right now we are not able to send mail from smart form at the decisions.com so i want to register this id smart forms at the decisions.com which okay. we can give it in the from tag from the application you, so you would have be in to the configure that on the actual mail server uh, so is there a setting in the system where is that for for decisions there wouldn't <laughs> be a setting that says this email can actually send something from this email address because that comes down to the actual mail server. Decisions can say to the mail server, send an email from this address, but if the mail mm -hmm. server isn't actually set up to send okay. an email from that address, then it can't do that. Okay, so what I understood is we have to register this ID in the SMTP server and which mm -hmm. is not in the systems folder here somewhere. Is it? Um, I mean, no, because the SMTP server is a separate 
thing. It's whatever you're routing your mail through. It's not a decisions thing. Why? Because on my company's uh, laptop, I have installed the decisions from its uh, installable. Mm -hmm. From the website, I downloaded and I installed SQL Server and then decisions. And then I am able to send a mail. But for that, I have not configured the SMTP server separately. By default, it was sending. So I think it is already registered somewhere in the decisions, mm -hmm. this system folder, which is allowing me to send the mail. But my company or clients uh, decisions is not allowing that. All right, so, so this is um, sounding like it would be another good uh, support call, something to talk about with the support team. Okay, so one is to configure the DL Outlook and another is to register from ID to send mail to a particular set of domain. Yeah. So you are creating the ticket for me? Um, I can. Yeah, please, thanks. Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. And uh, Jeremy, do you have anything that you want to talk about? Any questions from anybody else? Um, all right, cool. Then uh, I'd say we're good to end it here. Thank you all for coming. And thanks for the great questions. It was uh, nice talking to you guys. Have a great day.